On this episode of UTR, it's another one of our incredible UP adventures, where we show you why our state's upper half is a place you just have to visit. We'll head to the top of the Mackinac Bridge, don't look down, eat with an army of antlers, and fall in love with Tequaminon. Then we'll visit a ranch you'll barely believe and prepare pasties like pros. Get ready to explore five awesome reasons why the Upper Peninsula is the place to be, and Under the Radar Michigan is the show to watch. Under the Radar Michigan is brought to you in part by the Michigan State Housing Development Authority, investing in people, places, and partnerships to help transform Michigan and the Michigan economy. In cities, towns, and neighborhoods, people are building better places to live and better communities. We all have one, that perfect spot, a special place we go to smooth out the ripples of the day. Our perfect spot is calling. Our perfect spot is pure Michigan. Your trip begins at Michigan.org. And by Big B Coffee, celebrating 18 years as a Michigan company. Gift cards, mugs, and coffee by the pound available in store and online. Franchise info available at BIGGBY.com. The Susan G. Komen Race for the Cure series raises funds and awareness in the breast cancer fight, celebrates survivorship, and honors those who have lost their battle. Everyone is welcome. Find a Komen Race for the Cure in more than 140 cities at Komen.org. I've been around the world, but there's one place I keep coming back to. And the more I explore, the more I realize it's the place to be. I'm Tom Dalton, and this is Under the Radar, Michigan. Now, for you downstate flatlanders who have not been to Michigan's beautiful Upper Peninsula yet, we're going to make it simple for you. We're going to feature some really cool stuff on the eastern side because it's closer and easier for you to get to. And uh, you better get up here quick because I think I'm growing antlers. Let's face it, with the advent of modern-day automotive technology, a.k.a. cars, it's never been easier to hit the road and explore Michigan's great Upper Peninsula. And why, you ask? Because from great lakes and large land mammals to pristine forests and friendly folks with fantastic food, the UP has everything the modern explorer needs to feel alive again. And that's why we're heading back UP right now. Michigan's incredible Upper Peninsula is located due north of the Lower Peninsula, right on the other side of the mighty Mackinac Bridge. And uh, speaking of the bridge... Have you ever wondered what it would be like to go to the very top of the suspension towers on the Mackinac Bridge? <laughs> you have? Well, I haven't, but the crew's going to make sure I find out. That's right. What better way to start this adventure than from the top of the Mackinac Bridge? Not a feat for the weak of mind, heart, or stomach. And that's three strikes for me, but there was no way I was getting out of this one. Now, before heading up, I figured it would be a good idea to stall, or <clears throat> I mean chat, with Bob Sweeney from the Bridge Authority. Now, Bob, I have not been to the top of the bridge yet, but the crew has talked me into doing it. What sort of experience should I expect up there? Well, it'll be a little bit like going through a submarine. You'll, you'll enter a small oval-shaped door, and you'll go through a bunch of cells. There's about 2,500 cells in each one of the towers, so that, and that's what adds stability to the towers themselves. So you're going to go in all these different caverns and uh, work your way up. You're going to go most of the way up on an elevator. So you don't climb up the outside? No, you don't climb on the outside. Some people think that, but actually you don't climb on the outside. Although if we were hit by lightning, you might have to uh, climb down on the outside, but fortunately, uh, I think they've been up today, so I think you're safe. Why would you even let me up there? That's what I'm trying to figure it out. I mean, it's gotta be a spectacular view. Oh, it's awesome. You got a beautiful day. It's nice and sunny and clear out today, so you're gonna have uh, great scenery when you're up there. So when was this bridge built? Construction started on the Mackinac Bridge on May 7th of 1954. It took about three and a half years to build it, and it was open to traffic on November 1st of 1957. Well, I mean, this bridge, it's an icon, it's a monument, it's one of the most majestic things in Michigan, and it must be a constant battle against Mother Nature just to keep it as beautiful as it is. Oh, sure, being, uh, you know, over 57 years old now, it uh, takes a lot of maintenance and upkeep, and a suspension bridge is kind of like a rope bridge, you know, it's uh, designed to move and flex. And because of that movement, uh, things uh, freeze up and they uh, bend and break and we have to get out there and repair them. What do you think this bridge means to the state of Michigan and the UP? 
Oh, sure. Well, to the state of Michigan, it's easily the most recognizable icon. And to the UP, it's a vital link to the rest of Michigan. You know, you have 350,000 people in the Upper Peninsula, and the only way they can connect to the Lower Peninsula is by crossing the Mackinac Bridge. So it's an extremely vital link. Well, as much as I would have liked this conversation to go on forever, there was no stopping the clock, and it was finally time to head inside, sign our lives away, and suit up for adventure. And as we made our way out to the tower, believe it or not, I wasn't even as scared. Well, kind of, sort of, not really. There's no doubt that doing this show gets Jim, Eric, and me into some pretty cool places, but this one topped the cake. The inside of the South Tower was a surreal labyrinth of small tunnels, elevators, and ladders, all leading to one of the coolest things I have ever done. The word wow doesn't even begin to describe the feeling or the views you get when you walk onto the small platform that towers high above the Mackinac Straits. And if making it up here wasn't enough, Mother Nature even played nice and offered us some of the bluest skies imaginable. Todd Mayer is one of the lucky few charged with keeping the mighty Mac in tip-top form. For him, this was just another day at the office. Okay, first of all, Todd, I'll admit it. When I came through that hatch, it's tough to take the first step out here. We're 500 what? 552. Above the water. Yes. Uh, this is amazingly scary, but uh, what an adrenaline rush to come out here. How often do you come up here? Uh, lately, uh, a couple times a week. The last, the last couple of weeks, yeah. yeah. What an adrenaline rush. I mean, how far can you see, even see up here? You can see the whole Upper Peninsula. Uh, probably about 20 miles today, roughly, I'd say. Visibility, yeah. Do you ever get tired of this? No. You never get us scared? I have uh, respect for the bridge. But this must be a thrill for you to do this. Heck yeah. What keeps you doing it every year? Uh, I guess uh, we get to maintain and work on the structure that a lot of people uh, would like to. It's something that's incredible and something that's known around the world, and you get to take care of it. Absolutely. Me and 39 other talented individuals, too, that everybody pitches in and everybody's got a role. Well, I came up here, I said I'd do it. I was a scared, but I did it anyway. I'll come back when you get the zip line in that goes to the Grand Hotel. Awesome. Climbing to the top of the Mackinac Bridge was an incredibly scary and exhilarating experience all at the same time. And it really gave me a deep appreciation for the true majesty of this incredible monument to man's ingenuity. It also gave us a great view of our next UP adventure. So what are we waiting for? First stop is the home of the Sioux Locks, Sault Ste. Marie. You know, it never ceases to amaze me how many amazing places amaze me on this amazing show. Oh, in this place, you'll be amazed. Antlers is a cool and rustic restaurant in Sault Ste. Marie where just about every land mammal imaginable watches you enjoy your meal. If you're looking to turn your next dinner into an adventure, get ready, because when you come through the door, you'll be welcomed with a lot more than just open arms. Welcome to the Antlers! <laughs> All this racket has been a custom here since the days of Prohibition, when the bells and whistles were meant to warn folks of an impending raid. And it's just one of the things that makes Antlers such a great UP tradition. So it's your first time at Antlers. Yes. Were you amazed? <laughs> Absolutely amazed. It was fantastic. Awesome people, great food, really a lot of fun. Did you order anything off the wall? <laughs> no, nothing off the wall. <laughs> okay, yeah, I would stick to the menu. Did any of these animals scare you? The hammerhead, actually. You know what, I think that mountain lion is staring at you. Yeah. Right? Ugh. Thanks for the heads up. What do you love about this place? Love the white fish, love the atmosphere, love coming in here. When we have friends and family come to town, first place we come. Is there a white fish up here on the... There's a furry one. Oh yeah, I saw one. him. Might need a beer to wash that one down. This place has great atmosphere, good food, ample amber ales, and a history more fun than a barrel of bootleggers. Just ask owner Chris Sabo. I think every land mammal and earth creature is in here, in this place. Where did they all come from? Well, uh, we're kind of a taxidermy orphanage. Uh, it's a collection that's been growing ever since 1948. But the tradition is maintained by us for, you know, hopefully for a long time of, you know, bringing in taxidermy and trading out, you know, catering, food, lunch, beers, depending on what size the animal is. Well, right now you guys are a great restaurant and bar, but this place has a pretty colorful past. <laughs> the original name was the Bucket of Blood Saloon? Yeah, Bucket of Blood Saloon. Uh, if you look back in history, 
a lot of beer, restaurant, bar, brothels, saloons, gambling houses. They all had tough names. You know, there was no crazy flamingo or tipsy <laughs> seagull or something like that. Everything had to have a tough name or, you know, nobody would go because they wouldn't, you know, nobody wanted to go to some place that wasn't a, a man's hangout or so to speak. Someone told me the original bar from Prohibition is actually in the basement here. Is that true? And there are parts of a really old bar downstairs, but it's kind of hard to tell whether or not it's really from Prohibition or not. Downstairs was where a lot of you know, activities, if you will, uh, <laughs> happened. Well, now that you're a respectable restaurant <laughs> and bar, I understand you serve northern cuisine. What's northern cuisine? Well, we just try to do a really nice job of being creative, using a lot of local food, uh, whitefish, venison. Um, we have uh, a buffalo ranch just south of us, and we use, uh, you know, we, do, we sell buffalo steaks and burgers. And then we do a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of different unique stuff with uh, the wild game, too. What's the funnest part about owning a place this crazy? You know, we saw the light in the fact that this place was, you know, bigger than us. And, uh, you know, there's so many more aspects to this place than just, you know, the menu, the food. You know, there's the people, the animals, the history. It's great. You know, I've been in the restaurant business since I was a teenager, and this is the best place I've ever worked, and it's a lot of fun. So next time you're feeling a little wild and crazy and hunger hits, just head north to Antlers in Sault Ste. Marie. Just uh, don't order the furry whitefish. It's a little dry. The Quamadon Falls, you know about it, I know about it, we all know about it. Ah, but have you been there yet? Hmm? Just west of the little town of Paradise in the eastern UP is one of the most beautiful places in Michigan. And yep, I've never been there. So to finally get up close and personal with the Quamadon Falls, I met up with park ranger Teresa Neal, who started off by showing me Tequamanon's incredibly awesome lower falls. This is an absolutely exceptional experience. I had no idea you could rent rowboats and row up to the falls. Oh yeah, you get a workout. It's a super interactive location, the lower falls. Yeah, I was gonna say, Lots you know, of cool things to do. a lot of people don't know, because I always thought it was just the upper falls, but there's the upper and lower falls. Explain the difference. Correct, so the upper falls is about four miles upstream from here. It's a big waterfall, yeah. so about 50 feet tall, 200 feet wide, lots of water, but the lower falls is way prettier. So as you can see, we have lots of great fall color this time of year. Um, it's a series of six cascading waterfalls that go around an island. Um, so you have a better chance of seeing wildlife here, you have a better chance of getting in the water, a lot of people fish here. Yeah. So it's right near the campground too, so it's walkable. So you can rent these rowboats and row over to the island and hike around and see the falls up close and personal. Correct, yeah, and that's how everyone wades in the falls and they get much better photographs. Now, I didn't realize it, and I apologize, but this is a state park. I thought it was just a, I thought it was a little trail you walked and saw a waterfall, but this is an actual state park. It is, yeah, so our park has just under 50,000 acres and uh, the most popular areas are the upper and lower falls but uh, there's a lot more to this park. We have about 30 miles of hiking trails, lots of snowmobile trails. Um, it, there's a lot to explore. People are hunting this time of year. So there's a lot of wilderness north of the falls that people uh, are welcome to go check out. Well, this totally reminds me of being out west in Colorado or something. Yeah, and you had no idea that you could get road to the island. Oh, thank you, by the way. Yeah, okay. And let me know if you get tired, because yeah. you see these guns, yeah. I can more than handle it. Once you're on the island, you're literally surrounded by tons of cascading waterfalls. And the natural beauty along the quarter mile trail around the island is breathtaking. I had no idea that on this hike you could get so up close and personal with the waterfall. I mean, you can, I can touch the waterfall. You can touch the waterfall, definitely. And this rock we're standing on, what is this? This is a sandstone that's actually uh, quite ancient. It's 500 million year old Precambrian age sandstone. So in some areas you can still see some of the rippling from back when this was kind of a, a shallow saltwater sea. Yeah, this is exceptional. It definitely has a unique smell to it. Here at the falls, at Tequamanon, you know, what gives the water that rusty color is the tannic acid from well, many of the trees, particularly the hemlock trees. So as these trees are decomposing, they're releasing tannic acid into the water, which gives it that yellowish tint. So there's not a root beer plant north of here? Unfortunately, no, no. Okay. no. Although Lark does say this is where her beer water comes from. <laughs> it is pretty though. It is, yeah. And it gives it a unique smell also, I think. It's not really gross, but it's definitely unique. The Lower Falls is something a lot of people miss entirely, and that's too bad. It really is a beautiful place to be and totally worth the trip. 
Next, it was time to go visit the granddaddy himself. So with the help of a little TV magic, Teresa and I hiked about four miles west to the beautiful Upper Falls, and I was impressed. Now, the first thing I'm gonna tell people when I get home is the, the Upper Falls looks so much bigger than it does in pictures. Yeah, that's always the case when you're here in person. It's much bigger in real life. How much water is coming off that thing? Today there's about 4,000 gallons per second coming over the waterfall. So from where we're standing, we're about 100 feet above the river's edge, and the waterfall itself is 50 feet tall, so you're still kind of looking down on the falls from here. This is pretty spectacular. Yeah, it is pretty big. Definitely the largest waterfall in Michigan and one of the largest east of the Mississippi. You know what's amazing to me? For only $11, you can get the passport for your license plate and get into any Michigan State Park and see stuff like this. It is a heck of a deal. The Recreation Passport funds all of our infrastructure here, our maintenance, everything. So it's a great deal for Michigan residents. I would pay $11 just to see this. Well, I'd even pay $12 to see this. Ooh, good to know. There's a plethora of places along the gorge to view the falls. And as we checked them all out, I couldn't help but think this is something your family really needs to see. Next time you're planning a trip, skip the airport and check out to Quaminon Falls State Park in the UP. It's a tremendous sight to see, but to see it, you gotta get up here. When there's no one left to care for a bear, where do they go? I'll tell you where. They go to Oswald's Bear Ranch, that's where. It's pretty nice here too. Just north of Newberry in the Eastern UP is Oswald's Bear Ranch. And if it wasn't for this place, the bears you see would probably cease to be. They call Dean Oswald Bear Man, and for good reason. His love for these gentle giants has helped create a sanctuary for orphaned and abused bears that otherwise would have probably met their end. This is also a place where man and beast come together to gain a mutual respect for each other. Young and old come to Oswald's Bear Ranch to have an up-close and personal experience with Michigan's beautiful black bear. The entire Oswald family is a part of the process here, working around the clock to make sure these bears are happy and healthy. As for Dean, well, he's probably one of the most interesting people you'll ever meet. Now, Dean, I'm sure you didn't always have a bear ranch. What did, what did you do before you were a bear wrangler? Ah, before bears, high school, <laughs> Marine Corps, police department, fire department, professional boxer for 11 years, started bear hunting in 1962, gave it up a couple years later, started rescuing bears in 84, and have been rescuing for 31 years now. I didn't realize what gentle creatures they really are. They are, Tom. When I get them, they're normally from a logging accident or a car accident or a person that's breeding that has them and has too many, well, once it has to get rid of them, I'll get them when they're like three pounds. And uh, that's just about that long and about that high and just big enough for a nipple stick in their mouth and I put them in the house with me. Uh, normally two or three uh, we get in the uh, first of March. Uh, born in January, all black bears are born in January. And, uh, so you're Papa Bear. I'm Mama Bear. Oh. I'm Mama Bear. <laughs> okay. so, but anyway, uh, so I do that through the winter time, and then when the weather starts breaking, like the first of May, then we take them outside, and my youngest son takes over from there. Yeah. And the habitats that you've built here for them are extraordinary. They're huge. There's waterfalls. Well, they should be. I mean, if you're going to have an animal in captivity, particularly a bear, uh, our one habitat that's behind you right now is better than a half mile around. Got low spots in it, got high spots in it. There's water running through it all day long, fresh water. Then we have the waterfalls area, which is for the uh, bears that were cub bears. One and two and three year olds go into there. There's something mystical about bears. Yeah. Uh, there's just something about an animal that powerful that's that gentle. Seven times the strength of you and I. And they'll still take a little piece of candy out of your mouth. Oh, all, yeah. Because I think yeah. they love you. Well, I don't know. I never asked any of them, but I'm, well, I can I can I see their I can see their crazy. I, out of 31 years, I've only been bit one time that's because a bear was jealous. Now, when it comes to kids and bears, there's one thing they all have in common. After a healthy meal, they all want something sweet, and they're both not afraid to whine for it. Let's hear it. There you go. Come on, 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 num num, num num, num 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 num. Nom, 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 nom. What do they really eat? Uh, <laughs> fruits, vegetables, meats. Oh yeah, they eat better you and I. So you get, they get a real healthy oh, diet. Yeah. This is just a treat. This oh. is like with my kids, they get a C treat. Cindy, the cook from Zeller, saves them all the breakfast stuff. Yeah. The bacon, the sausage, the French toast. Oh, so they get, oh, yeah. so they get, a, they get all the food groups. All around plus three, peaches all day, pears all day, apples all day. And, and now you can't release this bear into the wild. No, no, they'd be here, they'd be here for 25 years until he dies. Wow. Yeah, should be here. Oswald's Bear Ranch is a great place for the whole family to laugh and learn about these mighty and majestic animals. 
And after spending a few hours with Dean and his family, it's obvious they have found true bear heaven right here in the UP. Then good year, then good year, then good. If you're a youper, a pasty is a taste-tempting, savory meal you can hold in the palm of your hand. And if you're not a youper, well, it's pretty much the same thing. You just don't get to eat them as often. So to get our Flatlander hands on one, we headed west to marvelous Munising and found Muldoon's. If you're looking for a classic, traditional pasty, Donna Grahovic and Peggy Crommel and their league of extraordinary pasty preparers will totally take care of you. First things first, before we get started, I, one question. Do you guys vent? into the parking lot on purpose because when you drive by here, it's intoxicating. We didn't even have to get directions. We just could smell our way here. <laughs> it's great advertising. It was planned that way. It was Seriously? in the plans. Sure. Yeah. Now, for those of, who have never had a pasty before, what is a classic pasty? It's our beef traditional pasty, and it has ground beef in it with potatoes, onions, carrots, and rutabaga. A ruta what? Rutabaga, like a turnip. Ruta what is a rutabaga? It's a root vegetable. Well, I know, but where do you, do you grow them here? Where do you get them? Oh, yeah, right out back. Okay. <laughs> right back. I, don't, I don't believe you. What's the, what's the history of pasties? Where do they come from? They come from Cornwall, England. That's the original location. Yeah. And the women there, did, it's the same reason they're popular here, is because they used to make them for their husbands when they would go into the mines over there. And when the immigrants came to the United States, that tradition followed suit. So exclusively is what we're hearing in the Upper Peninsula because the mining industry was so large here. These women brought that tradition with them and it's never left. So it's a portable meal you can put in your pocket. Easy. Awesome. Okay, well, let's make a pasty. How do you actually make a pasty? You start with the dough that was made the night before, so we're all ready to go today. Okay. They're already pre-measured. Yes. Roll in a little bit of flour. Okay, I can do that. And by the way, thanks for giving me a striped apron with a plaid shirt. I thought shirt. it matched very well. And you're a youper that way. You look like a youper. I am, eh? Yeah. Like, yeah, eh? I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Does this apron make my butt look big? Uh, no comment. No comment. <laughs> okay, so you roll in the dough. And then I just kind of flatten it on two sides. Okay. And then we have the dough roller. Oh, there's a dough roller? So I just put it in the dough roller. Top, top, top. top. Nope, right here. Okay, like that? <laughs> Slide it through. Oh. Turn it sideways. Oh. oh, I'm helping. Sorry. That's okay. Do it again. No, 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 no. Oh, oh. Leave it there. Okay. Maybe I should show you first. Yeah, well, <laughs> that's a good point. Okay, you do it. <laughs> and then just kind of roll it back through here, and you kind of guide it through the bottom. Catchy. Oh, okay. No, I He's got there. It. You okay, go. Now. So through once. Okay. Turn it sideways. Yep. Through the bottom. Roll it back. Oh, <laughs> yep. Just what, like that. What, did I do? what happened? <laughs> you didn't guide what? it through. Oh, and guide it through. You kind of have to, there we go. We'll try it one more time. Okay, so. I stink at it, too. Do you do seriously? Oh, yeah, boy, I yeah. really do. That's why she's standing there looking, and we're doing the work. Now, if you haven't gathered by now, one of the main ingredients in Muldoon's pasties is fun. Heck, the fact that they let me in the kitchen is proof positive they have a real good sense of humor here. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Look at oh, Tom's. Oh. It's beautiful. <laughs> Very nice. Very nice. If that stays together in the oven, I'll be amazed. You're eating that one. <laughs> okay. Making pasties with Donna and Peggy was an absolute blast. And I did so well, they even promoted me to prep boy. At least I think it was a promotion. Hey, how am I doing? Right. Terrible. No. <laughs> That's a big carrot. So if you want to experience the original UP fast food, there's nothing faster than a portable pot pie you can pull out of your pocket. And trust me, at Muldoon's, just one of these tasty mounds of crust-covered meaty goodness, and you're set for a while. You'll also be set for a while on adventure when you visit the UP. I mean, where else can you get high on Michigan, eat with antlers, see big black bears, and wander through waterfalls? You know where. That's right, just hop in your car, drive past the airport, and head north to the UP. Excelsior! I just love saying that. Hey folks, you wanna become part of the League of Extraordinary UTR Super Friends? It's super easy, just go to utrmichigan.com. You can watch episodes, tell us where to go next, get information on all the places we've been and even get UTR wearables like I'm sporting right here. Oh, and you can even get our new book, Under the Radar, The First 50, featuring our first 50 episodes and DVDs of all of our shows. So become a UTR super friend today. Go to utrmichigan.com. It's super cool and super easy. Under the Radar Michigan is brought to you in part by the Michigan State Housing Development Authority, investing in people, places, and partnerships to help transform Michigan and the Michigan economy. 
In cities, towns, and neighborhoods, people are building better places to live and better communities. We all have one, that perfect spot, a special place we go to smooth out the ripples of the day. Our perfect spot is calling. Our perfect spot is Pure Michigan. Your trip begins at Michigan.org. And by Big B Coffee, celebrating 18 years as a Michigan company. Gift cards, mugs, and coffee by the pound available in store and online. Franchise info available at BIGGBY.com. 